and welcome this is baller scuba with another random game today we're going to be playing an old classic and an old request on the channel we're going to be playing zork this is zork one the great underground empire first released in i'm gonna say 1980 by infocom even though it says 81 here it's a storied history on the release of zork but around that time frame it is an old game Let's go ahead and get started. It is a text adventure game, so no sound, no graphics, nothing, but it is still very good. We start off west of the house, and they give us almost no information here. Uh, you are standing in an open field west of a white house with a boarded front door. There is a small mailbox here. We're going to go ahead and open up that mailbox. We can get a leaflet out of there. Let's go ahead and take it and read it. Welcome to Zork. Zork is a game of adventure, danger, and low cunning. In it, you will explore some of the most amazing territory ever seen by mortals. No computer should be without one. In 1980, that is very correct. Maybe not now, but back then, definitely. Uh, so, let's try to go around and see what we can do. Nothing we can do with the house because the front door is boarded. Let's try to go around it. Let's head north. Now we are north of house. You are facing the north side of a white house. There is no door here and all the windows are boarded up. To the north, a narrow path winds through the trees. Well, let's go through that path. Now we're in the forest path. There is a path winding through a dimly lit forest. The path heads north-south here. One particularly large tree with some low branches stands at the edge of the path. Sounds like I need to climb that tree. Now we're up the tree. Notice how they are counting my moves. And also giving me a score. And how, notice how I don't have a score. We'll get one, though, eventually. You are about 10 feet above the ground, nestled among some large branches. The nearest branch above you is above your reach. Beside you on the branch is a small bird's nest. And the bird's nest is a large egg encrusted with precious jewels, apparently scavenged by a childless songbird. The egg is covered with fine gold inlay and ornamented in lapis lazuli and mother of pearl. Unlike most eggs, this one is hinged and closed with a delicate-looking clasp. The egg appears extremely fragile. You hear in the distance the chirping of a songbird. That's probably not going to be good. The egg sounds like a Fabergé egg to me. I'm going to take it. Sounds like it's mine. You hear in the distance the chirping of a songbird. All right, let's get the hell out of here. Let's go down. We're going to go south. Now we're to the north of the house, and the, and the chirping of the songbird is gone. Let's head east here. Now we are behind the house. And notice how I did get a score for picking up that egg. Don't drop the egg. Uh, you are behind the white house. A path leads into the, into the forest to the east. In one corner of the house, there is a small window, which is slightly ajar. Let's open up that window a little bit more, can we? We can. With great effort, you open the window far enough to allow entry. Go in window. And we've made it inside the house into the kitchen. You are in the kitchen of the White House. A table seems to have been used recently for the preparation of food. A passage leads to the west, and a dark staircase can be seen leading upward. A dark chimney leads down, and to the east is a small window, which is open. On the table is an elongated brown sack smelling of hot peppers. A bottle is sitting on the table. The glass bottle contains a quantity of water. I'm going to take that bottle of water. Do I get any points for that? No, but hey, I got up to 15 points for making it inside. That's something. So, uh, once you are in the kitchen and you do have the bottle, you're free to go west to the living room. You're in the living room. There's a doorway to the east, a wooden door with, a, with strange gothic lettering to the west, which appears to be nailed shut, a trophy case, and a large oriental rug in the center of the room. Above the trophy case hangs an, an elvish sword of great antiquity. So there are elves in this game, you say. A battery-powered brass lantern is on the trophy case. Well, lanterns are always useful in games like this, so I'm going to go ahead and take it. But, what else do I need? Oh, you're damn right, I need that sword. It's an elvish sword. It'll tell me when things are going to go badly for me, which is probably always. 
most likely always. All right, so once you have everything that you need, go ahead and head back east and uh, go up the stairs. The game actually understands when I put in the. All right, you have moved into a dark place that is pitch black. You are likely to be eaten by a Gru. I don't know what that is, but it sounds devastating. All right, so we're gonna have to turn on the lantern. The brass lantern is now on, and we can see that we are in the attic. This is the attic. The only exit is a stairway leading down. A large coil of rope is lying in the corner. On the table is a nasty looking knife. Let's go ahead and take that rope. I don't know if I want that knife. I have a sword, so I should be fine. Uh, go down the stairs again. Turn off the lantern. You want to make sure that you turn that brass lantern off from time to time. Otherwise, things are not going to work out well for you. All right, let's go ahead and head back west, back into the living room. Move the rug with a great effort. The rug is moved to one side of the room, revealing the dusty cover of a closed trap door. This doesn't sound good, but let's open the trap door. The door reluctantly opens to reveal a rickety staircase descending into darkness. Let's go ahead and go down the trap door. You have moved into a dark place. The trap door crashes shut and you hear someone barring it. It is pitch black. You are likely to be eaten by a Gru. Your sword is glowing with a faint blue glow. This does not sound good. I think there are orcs nearby. Let's go ahead and turn on the lantern again and see what we can do. Find out that we are in the cellar. You are in a dark and damp cellar with a narrow passageway leading north with, and a crawlway to the south. On the west is the bottom of a steep metal ramp, which is unclimbable. Well, this doesn't sound good at all, does it? Now, at this point, what you want to do, let's see if the game will let me do it, is uh, save. I can. Oh, uh, that sounds good to me. It's mapped a little strange. It is on the E drive for me right now, but should be fine. Uh, just go ahead and... What? It's failed. Let's try that again. Save. And we'll go with uh, sorg1.dat. There we go. I have to actually type it in for some reason. Okay, it saved it. Hooray. Now, we are free to head north. You do want to save before you do this. We've made it to the troll room. This is a small room with passages to the east and south and a forbidding hole leading west. Bloodstains and deep scratches, perhaps made by an axe, mar the walls. A nasty looking troll brandishing a bloody axe blocks all passages out of the room. Your sword has begun to glow very brightly. The axe hits your sword and knocks it spinning. We're going to need to fight that troll with our sword. Well, he, he knocked it out of our hands. All right, pick up sword. Taken. The troll's axe barely misses your ears. Let's fight the troll with the sword this time. The fatal blow strikes the troll square in the heart. He dies. Almost as soon as the troll breathes his last breath, a cloud of sinister black fog envelops him. When the fog lifts, the carcass has disappeared. Your sword is no longer glowing. And we have done it, so you're damn right. I'm going to save again. I'll start doing this off screen. After some technical, technical difficulties, also linguistic difficulties. We are back uh, in the troll room. It doesn't necessarily show us that, but trust me, we're in the troll room. Uh, this is what happens when you have technical difficulties. Remember to save, it is always worthwhile. So from the troll room, we wanna go west. And now we're in a maze. This is part of a maze of twisty little passages all alike. Uh, this maze sucks, so pretty much just stick to the script here. You want to go south, and then east, and then up. Here, a skeleton, probably the remains of a luckless adventurer, lies here. Beside the skeleton is a rusty knife. The deceased adventurer's useless lantern is here. There is a skeleton key here. An old leather bag bulging with coins is here. I'm going to take that bag 
That's really all I want, though. So take bag of coins. And then once you have the bag of coins, you want to go southwest, east, south, and southeast. Notice how my sword is starting to glow. Now it's glowing very brightly. This room has an exit to the northwest and a staircase leading up. A cyclops who, look who looks prepared to eat horses, much less mere adventurers, blocks the staircase. From his state of health and the blood stains on the walls, you gather that he is not very friendly, though he likes people. Your sword has begun to glow very brightly. So fight him? No. Say Ulysses. The name of all cyclops' nemesis is... Well, all Cyclopes nemesis. Why not Odysseus? I don't know. The Cyclops, here in the name of his father's deadly nemesis, flees the room by knocking down the wall on the east of the room. Spoilers for the Odyssey. And my sword is no longer glowing. Now, because I went through the maze very easily and didn't have any interruptions, I'm going to head up. If you got an interruption, you kind of want to follow along with what I'm doing anyway, but uh, you'll have to do things a little bit differently. Uh, let's head up, and here we can get this thing started. You hear a scream of anguish as you violate the robber's hideaway. Using passages unknown to you, he rushes to its defense. The thief gestures mysteriously, and the treasures in the room suddenly vanish. We've made it to a treasure room. This is a large room whose east wall is solid granite. A number of discarded bags which crumble at your touch are scattered about on the floor. There is an exit down a staircase. There is a suspicious looking individual holding a large bag lean against one wall. He is armed with a deadly stiletto. There is a silver chalice intricately engraved here. Your sword has begun to gl glow very brightly. The thief strikes at your wrist and suddenly your grip is slippery with blood. Fantastic. Uh, he will always hit you uh, if you go into his place. Hopefully it's just not too bad. Uh, what you actually want to do, I know this sounds crazy, but you want to give him the egg. And if you encounter him, I kind of suggest you do the same. If you encounter him, though, he might not. you might not get the chance to kind of give it to him. You just kind of have to hope he takes it. With this, I'm kind of still in control. Let's give him the egg, though. The thief is taken aback by your unexpected generosity, but accepts the jewel-encrusted egg and stops to admire its beauty. Let's get the hell out of here. While I still can, hopefully things don't uh, go too bad for me here. So, once you are down, uh, you can go east. This is a long passage. To the west is one entrance. On the east, there is an old wooden door with a large opening in it, about Cyclops size. All right, we're going to head east again. Uh, now we're in the living room. Now here, we want to open the case. Remember, there was a case in the living room. And we want to put the treasures in the case. Done. Good. So... Then we can open the trap door, head down, back into the cellar. Here I want to wait because I want to clear up my injuries that I got from him stabbing my wrist. Time passes. Uh, diagnose. Am I doing okay? You have a serious wound, which will be cured after 49 moves. You, be, you can be killed by one more light wound. Oh, fantastic. He gave me a serious wound. That's not good. That's not good. <laughs> So I just kind of have to wait 49 moves. As you can see, I've only done 54 the entire game, so things have not really worked out all that well for me. All right, but what we want to do is head north. Uh, there's, this is still the troll room. Head east from here to the east-west passage. This is a narrow east-west passageway. So there is this narrow st stairway leading down at the north end of the room. Let's head north then. A chasm runs southwest to northeast, and the path follows it. You're on the south side of the chasm, where a crack opens into a passage. So let's keep on following along here. To the reservoir in the south, you are in a long room on the south shore of a large lake, far too deep and wide for crossing. There is a path along the stream to the east or west, a steep pathway climbing southwest along the edge of a chasm, and a path leading into a canyon 
to the southeast. There are so many ways for me to go here. I choose east. And we've made it to a dam! Does that mean this is the end of the game? No. You are standing on the top of a flood-controlled dam number three, which was quite a tourist attraction in times far distant. There are paths to the north, south, and west, and a scramble down. The sluice gates on the, dams, on the dam are closed. Behind the dam, there can be seen a wide reservoir. Water is pouring over the top of the now abandoned dam. There is a control pa panel here on which a large metal bolt is mounted. Directly above the bolt is a small green plastic bubble. Very strange world, Zork. We got trolls, we got cyclops, and we've got abandoned dams. I don't know, when I picture dams, I, I, I picture kind of a lot of technology. Maybe I'm just overthinking it here, though. So, we have made it to the dam. Let's head north into the dam lobby. This room appears to have been the waiting room for groups touring the dam. Yeah, like tourists and all that kind of stuff, you know? There are open doorways here to the north and east marked private. And there is a path leading south over the top of the dam. Some guidebooks entitled Flood Control Dam Number 3 are on the reception desk. There's a matchbook whose cover says, Visit Beautiful FCD Number 3 here. I'm going to take that matchbook. Now I have it. That's weird. You guys can come up with a better name than... Flood control dam number three? Nothing? All right. So uh, let's head back south a couple ways where we can make it to the deep canyon. Uh, you are on the south edge of a deep canyon. Passages lead off to the east, northwest, and southwest. A stairway leads down. You can hear the sound of water, flow, uh, flowing water from below. I assume that I can kind of uh, hear that all the time. I'm next to a dam. All right, we'll head down to the loud room. This is a large room with a ceiling which cannot be detected from the ground. There is a narrow passage from east to west and a stone stairway leading upward. The room is definitely loud with an undetermined rushing sound. The sound seems to reverberate from all of the walls, making, di making it difficult even to think. On the ground is a large platinum bar. There's a lot of stuff here that I'm kind of not grabbing. The game punishes you so much. You can die so easily, so easily. Uh, all right, uh, we want to go west. Don't don't get the bar. Uh, this is a circular stone room with passages in all directions. Several of them have unfortunately been blocked by cave-ins. Fantastic. We'll go southeast then. And we have made it to the engravings cave. You have entered a low cave with passages leading northwest and east. There are old engravings on the wall here. I'm kind of going quickly, I understand, but I mean, this is a deep game. And we've made it to the dome room after heading east. You are at the periphery of a large dome, which forms the ceiling of another room below. Protecting you from a precipitous drop is a wooden railing which circles the dome. Time for me to save. <laughs> 